Hi and welcome along. I'm the Gardener Ben with probably my most anticipated best of collection of the year. This one is always incredibly stressful to bring you and very, very eagerly anticipated by you all. And over the winter, I asked you what content you wanted to see me creating. And you asked for more information with regards to fragrance and strength of fragrance. So over the last uh, seven or eight months, I've actually created a 10 star fragrance rating for all of the roses that I've reviewed so far. I've gone back through the media created over the last few years and assessed each individual rose and the roses I continue to review on a yearly basis and each one has been awarded a fragrance rating from 1 to 10. The roses I'm going to talk to you about today all score over an 8 on the fragrance rating. Not everybody is here because unfortunately not everybody is in flower but please do check the caption below for the full listing of roses including their full fragrance rating out of 10 and their Latin names for you to be able to track them down if you find a rose that really captivates your attention that's no longer stopped by David Austin in this country. Please do bear in mind that this is just a snapshot of, of all of these beautiful roses next to me. Each individual plant has its own personal rose review so please head over to my story highlights on Instagram or over to my YouTube channel and watch the personal review and each particular rose will be assessed as I review it about the depth and strength of fragrance and more importantly the notes and actual smell itself. So let's get into this. So there's several roses that I will list at the end that unfortunately up to date aren't in flower but 10 absolutely crackers next to me. So let's get into these and I'll start, talk, start talking you through it. One that will not surprise you that many of you are really, really keen on is Boscobel, a lovely shrub rose reaching three feet by three feet, producing these large, very, very heavily cupped bowl shaped flowers uh, in two very distinctive flushes. The fragrance on this one is really, really very good. And that's why it is here in my best of collection. Next to it needs no introduction, although this particular flower is not the best uh, um, of the actual type of flower that it will produce. This one is Munstead Wood. No other rose produces flowers quite of this fragrance and this colour all at once. Obviously, as you're aware, she is viciously spiky and quite often you will find the strongest fragrances coming from the roses with the most thorns. So there's always a flip side to the beauty and the fragrance and quite often it's a little bit of a sting in its tail. But making it onto my best for fragrance rating, I believe with a nine or a nine and a half star fragrance review is the stunning Munstead Wood. Now, unfortunately discontinued here in the UK and put to retirement, it is still available worldwide. So please Please do check the Latin name if it's a rose that you want to get hold of into your collection. A firm favourite here but not very well known. This absolute stunner, once again retired here in the UK, is Benjamin Britten. I absolutely love this rose. The colour of it is absolutely extraordinary. A really, really heavy coral salmon colour with some beautiful antique edging. This particular plant really does age well and much like Princess Anne and the new Penelope Lively added to the collections this year. As this bloom fades it takes on this wonderful grey antique look as the petals fall. It is incredibly beautiful. The fragrance very very different on Benjamin Britten. It's very warm and very spicy. It's very masculine in its tones and it really is incredibly fragrant and it must have a uh, heritage uh, also with the likes of Gabriel Oak with those lovely purple stems behind. But this one is Benjamin Britten. Next to it, making it onto my best for fragrance rating this year and of course in previous years is the absolutely stunning Jubilee Celebration. As I keep saying, producing some of the largest blooms within the David Austin collections. These ones are pretty small, but sometimes as large as your hand. The kind of rose you want to pick and bring into the house and really make a show of, maybe on the dining room table or on your nightside bed stand. But this one is Jubilee Celebration. Trying my best not to miss any out on this particular one like I did in another one. This is my current ranked number one most recommended David Austin Rose. 
This particular plant, unfortunately, is not having a good time of it this year. A wasp nest has moved in right next to this particular plant, and I braved getting this particular flower cut today for you. This one is the really stunning Silas Mana. Once again, not the best quality bloom. This particular plant will produce blooms much, much larger than this, and it has done it in the garden, but unfortunately, I wasn't brave enough to cut one. This particular one, this is Silas Mana. Next to it, one of two roses from the same heritage. This particular stunner is the Country Parson. I like this rose so much, along with its sister rose, Harlow Car. I have several of these dotted about the garden. The colour ranging everywhere from a very strong sherbet lemon all the way through to a very, very heavy ivy cr ivory cream. The fragrance on this one, really, really intense and very, very powerful. Carries beautifully on the wind if you do happen to get a nice warm and windy summer's day. As I said in other collections, this particular rose, along with its sister rose, Harlow Carr, does actually perform really very well in a salt or windy position. So if you are on exposed ground or if you're gardening on a terrace or maybe on a balcony on an exposed pot, Country Parson is a rose that's going to be giving you lots and lots of fragrance and a huge amount of value for money. However, like its sister rose, Harlow Carr, it is incredibly spiky and care must be taken if you have children or pets. Next to it, the absolutely stunning addition from last year, Bring Me Sunshine. This rose is going to rate really heavily in my new top 20, a most recommended David Austin roses. It's an absolute cracker and I can smell this rose even from here. With everybody behind me, I can still pick up on its really lovely sandalwoody, clovey tones. A very, very lovely rose producing huge flowers in absolutely masses and abundance. This particular rose, I'm actually making it onto several of my new best of collections, including one filmed of just a day or two ago. The best for making a huge statement on a pillar or post or obelisk. This particular rose needs a little bit of support and is gonna reach in excess of six feet but it's a really lovely problem to have. It will be absolutely dripping with flowers and the kind of thing that you really want to make a spectacle of. So that one is Bring Me Sunshine. Down onto the lower level, this hugely powerful colour right next to me. Once again, we'll need no introduction with David Austin fans. This one is the stunning Poet's Wife. Really rich golden yellow flowers producing a huge amount of fragrance. This is a large sprawling and very informal shrub which does need a little bit of support. I allow mine to simply ramble about the border poking a head out here, poking a head out there. It does mean during the winter I need to be a bit careful when it comes to pruning because the, the stems are all over the place but you do have to be a bit careful in those incidents but this is the poet's wife. You can see the beautiful depth of colour with this particular one. Again, very capable of producing enormous flowers, four and a half to five inches across with an unbelievable fragrance. Again, the kind of rose that you want to cut and bring into the house. Next to it, appearing on several best of collections and the sister rose of the country parson is Harlow Carr. This particular rose ranks really heavily within my top 20 and appears in several of my best cough collections, including best for growing in a pot and a new collection coming up over the next couple of weeks. But Harlow Carr is an absolute cracker of a rose. But once again, much like the country parson, you do need to be careful of its thorns. It is incredibly prickly. This one and the country parson don't like the wet weather very much and you can often find that blooms are produced in such large volumes that if they do get wet the entire bush looks like it's been sort of dunked uh, in, in, in mud. Everything sort of rotting onto the plant you just need to get in there and cut it all off uh, to actually salvage the buds below but quite often they do get very heavily water laden and then unfortunately they start to go mouldy and get covered in mildew but it's a really cracking rose with a fantastic fragrance. Next to it, everybody's favourite rose, Gertrude Jekyll. This really strong, very, very heavy sugar pink plant. I went out and picked another flower, a much, much better uh, particular bloom on Gertrude Jekyll, making it, of course, onto my best for fragrance collection, rating obviously well over a fragrance rating of an eight. Special notes have to be made for the people or the roses that couldn't be cut and brought to you today. So missing from this particular collection, rating at a 10 star and above on the fragrance rating for myself is The Generous Gardener, Constance Spry, 
which is one of the first additions from David Austin roses. Uh, that is a once flowering climbing rose, so it's not going to be flowering at this time of year. Young Lucidius, also out of flower at the moment. Penelope Lively, the new edition from David Austin Roses for 2023, which will be available throughout Europe and America over the next 18 to 24 months. And of course, the Lady Emma Hamilton, currently taking a small break between first and second flushes. But this is my best for fragrance range. These are 10, well actually there's more like 15 or 16 of the best for fragrance ratings roses, all ranking above an eight star on the fragrance rating. Please do take the time to watch each individual personal rose review that you can find either in my story highlights on Instagram or over on my YouTube channel for more information on each individual rose. Don't forget to save this video for later. And of course, you can share pictures of your rose to be featured on Instagram using the hashtag It's Ben's Fault. Thank you very much for joining me today. I will see you all again very soon. Take care now. Bye bye.